this is the site of one of the worst things that's ever happened in history, like this very spot here. Welcome, we're in Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh, yeah. Today's vlog is going to be a little bit different. It's a bit of a dark tourism, it's called. We're going to see Killing Fields. The famous Killing Fields of Phnom Penh. We're quite looking forward to learning a little bit more about it and uh, we will try to share it all with you. We watched a film last night actually, directed by Angelina Jolie, about, oh. I think it's called The First They Killed My Father. Oh I my think that's god. What it's called. It was, yeah, definitely makes you cry. We're heading to the fields now. We just booked a tuk tuk. About half an hour drive. It's 8k from town. 8 kilometers out of the city. A lot of traffic. Okay, let's go. <laughs> place is called Chico. the Cheung Ek Genocidal Center. So first I want to tell you what dark tourism is. So dark tourism is when you travel to a place to visit a place that's associated with death and tragedy and stuff like that. So we've done a few before. We did uh, Chernobyl, we did Pablo Escobar tour, that's dark tourism and now we've done this one. Cambodia was the site of mass genocide in the 70s. Six dollars each to get in. We get an audio guide with that, which is quite good, I think. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we spent twenty thousand, so about what well, uh, four pounds for the tuk tuk. tuk tuk. Yeah, for the tuk tuk. So so far, it's uh, obviously you have to pay, but um, I'm really want to. I really want to learn about this. Uh, place and the history and I think to understand Cambodia and traveling Cambodia you have to learn about this it only happened about 40 years ago between 40 and 50 years ago it's so not that far in the past when you consider what happened here it just seems crazy we'll tell you about that the further we go so let's start this so in 1975 Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge which was a crazy communist party they captured Phnom Penh basically after the Americans left and the Khmer Rouge took hold of Phnom Penh and Cambodia and they forced everyone out of the city. All the cities in Cambodia, they first forced them into the countryside to undertake like agricultural labour camps sort of things. The women, children, fathers, everyone needed to work, they needed to build their own new houses, they needed to get rid of all their clothes, all their belongings. They were supposed to be all equal but they wasn't obviously. Yeah, they just wanted to be their own people, run by themselves, not rely on any other country. Everyone had to wear black. They wasn't allowed to use any western medication. So the Khmer Rouge would kill people for being linked to the previous government, for being intelligent, they'll kill them for being rich. Anyone who they considered or thought they might be a threat, a threat or conspiring, yeah. they would kill them. They, would, they took away currency, they closed schools, they closed hospitals, they closed temples. There was no like private property. It was just a crazy place to live. The whole country was like a concentration yeah, camp pretty they much. They needed to work from morning to night, they didn't get enough food, they were dying from starvation. And Khmer Rouge, Khmer Red, because red symbols communism. It's like three people within three groups like were chatting, they weren't allowed to do that. They thought they would be considered conspiring so they'd get killed. So you really, you couldn't really socialise at all, it was just work and sleep and eat the little food that they had mm -hmm. and then back to work. In like if you're in your country and you imagine one in every four of you got killed in some way or form. A quarter of the population yeah. here died. About three million people. About three million people died here. It's crazy. A quarter of the population just wiped out, not only from execution, from disease and starvation. That's so what brought us to this place. This place is like you're going to see in a minute on the picture where uh, the Khmer Rouge people were bringing 
everyone to be executed. So the first stop is where the trucks arrived and all of the people who came from like this horrible torture prison dropped off at this very spot where the trucks stopped to be executed. They told them on the drive over, the executioners told them, oh, we're just putting you into a new house to stop the, uh, the prisoners causing a scene. But it's thought that most prisoners knew their fate when they were in that van, what was about to happen. So some that was stop number one. Some of them were already dying from starvation, being yeah. beaten up, and some of them were actually relieved that that's the end yeah. of their From the suffering. torture that they've been going through. Yeah. So we are coming up to the next stop. This is where a building used to stand. Where with like a thick walls without any windows. When there too many people started coming here on one night and they didn't get a chance to kill them, uh, they used to uh, leave them here and they slept in that place waiting, waiting to be killed. Uh, because at first there used to be one truck in the world week. As years passed, it was like few trucks at night used to come here and they just couldn't execute it, everyone at the same time. People we sent for execution were teachers, doctors, lawyers, lawyers anyone judges, who spoke foreign language, anyone who wore glasses, anyone who had soft hands for some reason. Yeah. Which is weird because Pol Pot itself, he, himself, he studied in France, he was a teacher. Exactly. So under his regime, he should have been killed. Yeah, he, the army began by him recruiting the young, uneducated people. Poor, lower class people. Uh, kids were part of the army, yeah, it's like young people. And the people were already starving because of America bombing, trying to stop the North Vietnamese supply routes. And so people were already starving and they ran to the city to escape. And then obviously they got to the city and they got evacuated. Mm -hmm. They told the people in the city that because the Khmer Rouge were there, the Americans are going to bomb it, so you have to get out. But that wasn't the case at all. That's where the detention centre would have been. Very much like Auschwitz, as Kasia said. Yeah. If you look at this tree here, the leaves or the branches are very sharp and solid, and they were used to cut prisoners' throats. And they used to cut the prisoners' throats with that, stop them screaming, basically. And when they were like beaten to death, they used to play loud music to cover up the screams. So this was one of the graves, a mass grave of 450 victims. You look behind it and you can see all the dips in the ground, the holes where more and more graves would have been. So many, yeah. Mm -hmm. I assume that they all got um, shot, killed and then dumped in those graves. Uh, but the crazy fact is that the bullets were expensive so they just beat them to death or they yeah, slit their throat or did whatever they could just to kill them and then dump their body in those. That's where the, they were. Tragic, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we just listened to like uh, stories from some of the prisoners who were here. And there was one who witnessed a woman who was given two bananas by a guard. Another guard caught her and said, you're stealing bananas. She said, no, I was giving them. He didn't believe her, so he bludgeoned her to death in front of other people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a plain sailing for the Khmer Rouge soldiers itself. By 1978, the Khmer Rouge was like disintegrating, it was getting worse. People started defecting to the other side. I mean, Pol Pot at this time was very paranoid. Even if there was even a hint of non-compliance from a soldier, they'd get killed. And they get decapitated just to show other soldiers what would happen if you step out of line if you don't do your job if you even think about going against us you get decapitated and this was a grave of all Khmer soldiers decapitated bodies 166 yeah yeah so this is the rags of the victims like clothes taken from children men children there are blindfolds cloth to tie people's hands together buried here victims are stripped of the clothes before they were buried and covered in something called DDT, a chemical, to basically finish the job if they weren't completely dead and to cover up the stench. We were walking and we just got to this point. They, every few months the caretakers of this place, they find teeth and bones and they just collect them and put them here, the smaller ones. So bones from victims who some have just been found, some fell out from decaying bodies, some were removed during torture and you just got a tub of them here. Yeah. Name. 
to probably one of the worst parts, mm. one of the saddest parts, the site of one of the worst things that's ever happened in history, like this very spot here. It's crazy what they did. So this grave was for women and children, babies, uh, all stripped naked, so the women they assume were raped and some watched their children beaten to death. But what's worse, this is one of the most horrible things, this tree here. The Cameroons used to grab the babies, children, smash them against the tree so the skull would smash. It's called the killing tree. That's how they used to kill the babies and the kids. They, when they found this place, they found like bits of brain on it. Oh. Yeah. So they grabbed the babies, the children, young children, by the legs, swung them against this tree until their brains or their heads smashed in and then just chucked them in the pit behind us. Cool. I mean, that's considering this was only 40, 50 years ago. Mm, this yeah. is something you'd probably imagine in like medieval times yeah. or ancient times. We've been to sites where they've sacrificed children for religious purposes, mm. but this isn't the same. They just killed them for who their parents were. They killed them so they wouldn't grow up and want revenge, basically. The paranoia that they'd want revenge, they just killed them. If they needed to kill one member of the family, they just killed the whole family? They killed them all, so none would get revenge. Mm. But the fact that they smashed babies and children against this tree... Crazy, yeah? Yeah. Just and as Kasia said, there, when they came after this place was out of use, so they found, as you say, bits of skull, bits of brain, blood all over this mm. tree. It's one of the worst things that I think we've ever seen mm -hmm. or know about. And tourists come here and they leave uh, bracelets for the children. And as we said before, they beat them like this because bullets were considered expensive, so they just beat people to death. That's the only reason. And they say the mothers that sat here, they had to watch that happen to their children. So this, I mean, like, what cause does anyone have to do that, these soldiers? Like, why? I know they did it because they'd be killed themselves, but could you bring yourself to do that? Mm. Even if you know you'd be killed yourself, could you live with that? If your whole your family will die if you don't do it? Well, yeah, that's good. Now we're going to head in the memorial stupa, uh, which is this building here. Seventeen levels, ten levels of skulls, and then the top levels are other body parts. And if you look, you can see where the skulls have been bludgeoned in. Like here, see lots of holes. Yeah, the skulls. Here they were beaten. It's insane. So they've marked the orange ones males, the blue per blue ones are females. The little holes and skulls are where they've been stabbed by this bayonet. There was three hundred of these killing fields across Cambodia. So this isn't the only one. Three hundred with thousands of bodies. And about 20,000 people died here. The Khmer Rouge were finally defeated yeah. on the 7th of January in 1979 when the Vietnamese, you know, they took back, they took Phnom Penh, they took control and that was the end of that horrible regime. Pol Pot only died in the leader in 1998 and as far as I know he wasn't sentenced to anything for his genocide committed The history of Cambodia is truly horrendous, this place. I think it's very important if you do plan to come to Cambodia to know the history, what happened to him, uh, to them and knowing that it was only 
um, of 40 years ago. Yeah, surprising what? how many people don't know about this and how bad it was. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that comes to the end. We're going to go grab a tuk-tuk and go back to town. Yeah, we've shown you the history of Cambodia or one part of the sad history of mm -hmm. Cambodia. Definitely, it's going to be a little bit zoned out till the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. really makes you think. It's not for faint-hearted. No, no, definitely not. Mm. So yeah, that's the end. And to the next one, we'll show you around Phnom Penh. Yeah. So we'll see you Thank then. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.